Hello viewers, this is Manash welcoming you to the series, You the Oracle Expert, your one-stop shop to learn and practice Oracle Database Administration and Unix with hands-on experiments using Oracle VirtualBox virtual machines. Build your knowledge base, confidence, and make your way to be an expert Oracle DBA. Hello viewers. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about Oracle locks, deadlocks, and blocking locks, and how to detect an alert on blocking lock situation using an OEM metric extension. So first, what is a lock in Oracle? A lock in Oracle is a mechanism by which Oracle maintains the data consistency. Instead of allowing multiple sessions to change a piece of data or a table row at a single point in time, it puts them into a queue and allows them to do their work in a first-come, first-served basis. Say user 1 wants to modify a row, then it will apply a lock first so the other users in the queue cannot modify it until it is done. Until the first user in the queue does not complete the transaction and releases the lock, the next one in the queue will not get a permission to apply the lock on the data. Once the first user completes the transaction, it releases the lock and makes the row available for the second user to apply the lock for its changes. It is an expected behavior as otherwise it will be a chaos of changes in the database and we will end up with inconsistent and useless data. So what is a blocking lock? We can take the same example to explain where if the user 1 does not complete the transaction and continues to block the subsequent users in the queue, to make any changes, then it is called a blocking lock. A blocking lock is usually a row lock contention in the database and represented with the wait event named NQTX row lock contention. Now secondly, what is a deadlock or ORA60? A deadlock is a situation where two sessions are waiting on each other to release a lock on a common resource. Just imagine a real life situation with two users. User 1 has the nail and user 2 has the hammer and both of them want to hang a picture on the wall. User 1 wants the hammer that the user 2 has so he can do the job but the user 2 wants the nail that the user 1 has so he can finish the work. If neither of the users give up, the situation will never end and the job to hang the picture in the wall will never complete. This is a real life example of a deadlock. Now if our friend whose name is Oracle comes to resolve the situation, it will ask one of the users to go home, usually the one who is waiting for a longer amount of time, then take the hammer or the nail whatever the person leaving had and give it to the other user to complete the job. This is the most effective resolution of the problem and Oracle takes care of this very well. So when a deadlock situation happens in the database, Oracle will take care of it automatically and we don't have to worry about this situation. The only thing that we need to worry about is to investigate why the deadlock happened and we do that by analyzing the deadlock graph in the trace file that is generated by Oracle on that deadlock situation. When a deadlock situation happens in the Oracle database, it's important to take a look at the graph that is inside the trace file generated because that gives us very useful information about why that deadlock happened or how we can prevent it from happening again. Now let's see the locks, blocking locks and deadlock situation in action. I have established two sessions to my test database. The first one using SQL plus and system user which will be used to create the locking situations. And the second session is established using sysuser and the toad application and this will be used to monitor the locking situations happening in the database. I have created one small table called test lock in the system user schema with only two columns. The first column with the name n is used to store numerical data and the second column called s is used to store text data. And I have already inserted three records to the table 1a, 2b and 3c are the values respectively and these are the three rows and I'll take a look at the session that is established using system user using this query where I'm joining 
the V$ dollar session and V$ dollar process dynamic performance views to find out a few details about the session. For example, the SID of the session that is this session using system user is 343 serial number OS process ID the event associated with the session currently the username the program used SQL ID and logon time and using the second query that is V$ locked object and I am also joining this view with the DBA objects to find out if there is any locked object currently in the database so right now there is no object in a locked status now I'm going to create a locking situation in the session that is using the system user so let's execute one update statement on the test lock table update test lock set n equal to 2 where n equal to 3 so it's a simple statement and I am just uploading the numerical value of the record to 2 where the value is already 3 and if I execute this there will be a lock applied to this particular record with n equal to 3 until I commit or roll back my transaction and if I go back to my monitoring session and see if there is any object that is getting locked I'll be able to see that this session that is the system user session with SID 343 is actually holding one lock on the test lock table and this locked mode is actually giving us some information about what type of lock it is different numerical values in this field called locked mode tells us what type of lock is actually applied whether it's an exclusive lock it's a shared lock it's a table lock or it's a row level lock etc etc now we are going to create a blocking lock situation to create a blocking lock situation we need at least two sessions to be established to the database so we established another session with the same system user and this session has not started doing anything yet please note that in the first session we have executed one update statement and we created a lock on the table test lock and the transaction is not yet completed means it is not rolled back or not committed means the lock is still there let's execute this query to find a few details about the two sessions we established using system user so the first session with the SID 343 was established at around 11.45 and the second session with the SID 286 established at 12.14 pm now in the second session we'll execute one update statement to update the same row that is being locked by the first session so we'll simply copy this from the first session and paste it and we'll execute it and we can see that we are not getting back the prompt means it is waiting for the lock to be released by the other session and now if we see what is the status of both the sessions we'll be able to see that the second session with the SID 286 is having a wait event as NQTX row lock contention and this is the representation of a blocking lock contention in the database we get some other information also like what is the SQL ID that is used by the second session and this is the SQL ID please note that to create the blocking lock situation the second session doesn't have to execute the same SQL statement or the same DML statement that is used by the first session rather it has to use a statement which is going to target the same row that is locked by the first session now this blocking lock situation will continue until the first session either rolls back the transaction or commits the transaction and the moment it completes it by committing or rolling back the transaction we will be able to see that the second session gets back its prompt 
and also the wait event that is representing the role of contention in the database is gone. So we'll simply roll back the first transaction, roll back, and the moment we hit enter, the rollback completed and also the second session got its prompt back. Now we'll execute this SQL statement again to see what is the wait event. And now we can see that the NQTX roll of contention wait event is gone and it is now with another wait event that is SQL net message from client. This is an idle wait event and we don't have to worry about this yet. And now we are going to create a deadlock situation. To create a deadlock, we have to create a situation where two sessions will be waiting for each other to release a lock. And we have two sessions already established to the database using system user and the SQL plus application. Let's take a look at a few details about the sessions. So the first session with the SID 286 and the second session is with SID 78 that is this one. Now I'll execute the update statement that we used before where we are setting the n equal to 2 where n equal to 3 and we'll execute it to update one row and we left it incomplete because we did not execute the rollback or commit yet. So the lock applied on this row is still there. And we can see that the session ID with 286 is holding a lock on the test lock table. Now we'll execute another update statement on the same table from the second session. And in the second session, we are executing one update statement to update the n equal to 3 where n equal to 2. So these two are different rows and they are not going to block each other yet. So the second session also updated one record and we left the transaction incomplete. Now we'll go back to the first session and we'll try to update the same record that was being updated by the second session so say n equal to 10 where n equal to 2 means this row with n equal to 2 is being updated to 3 in the second session and the first session is also trying to update it to 10 and if we execute this we are not getting back the prompt means this first session is now waiting for the second session to release the lock on this particular row with n is equal to 2. Now in the second session we will be updating the row that is being updated by the first session in its first update statement. So say set n equal to 11 where n equal to 3. So we see that in the first statement, in the first session, it is trying to update the value of n to 2 where n equal to 3. And in the second session, it is trying to update the value of n to 11 where n equal to 3. So both these sessions are targeting the same record. And the moment we hit enter, it is going to create a deadlock situation and Oracle will automatically resolve it immediately. And you see that the moment I hit enter in the second session to update the row, the first session encountered the deadlock error here. And it says that deadlock detected while waiting for resource. And by saying so, Oracle has automatically rolled back the second transaction of the first session. So now all we need to do is to complete the first transaction of the first session so the second session can also continue. Otherwise the blocking lock situation will continue. Please note that the deadlock situation has been already resolved and we are going to take a look at the trace file generated shortly. First let's roll back 
the first transaction in the first session and we can roll back this transaction also now let's take a look at the trace files that is generated by oracle because of the deadlock to find out the trace file first we have to know the os process id of the sessions and we can find it using our sql statement we can see that the os process id for the first session it's 7226 and for the second session it is 7976 so we'll be able to see a trace file with this process id in its name to find out the trace file we'll go to the database trace location let's connect to the database and find out the trace location we can take a look at the v dollar diag info view to find out what is the trace location and we can see that the default trace location for this database is this one now we'll go to this location there will be hundreds and thousands of trace files and in the list of files if you take a look at the files generated in the last five minutes we'll be able to see that there are two files one is .trm the other is the trc file with the process id that we are looking for and if we open this file the trace file will be able to see that this is the file that was generated because of the deadlock situation and it has some important information there so the deadlock detected aura 60 and the most important part in this deadlock trace file is this deadlock graph and in this deadlock graph you need to take a look at this column called holes and the other one called weights if you see all x there in these two columns then it means it is mostly an application issue probably the application is designed in such a way that the transaction is not completing fast enough causing other sessions to wait and also it gives us the sql queries in the trace file by looking into the module and the application that has the sql statement a developer can find out what might have caused that if you see an r or an s in this deadlock graph in these two columns then there may be something that can be done from the dba end such as increasing the init trans or max trans parameters in the definition of the locked table in question or if there is a missing index on a foreign key on the table involved in the transaction but if it is all x in both these columns in the graph it is mostly an application design issue and you can then follow up with the developers of the application about this deadlock so with this i am concluding the first part of this tutorial and in the second part we are going to use a metric extension to detect a blocking lock situation which will help us to resolve the contention so viewers i hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful please hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss an episode in this series for the oracle dbas or similar educational videos that i am uploading every week